Hello and welcome to the second episode of The Next Block. This episode originally aired on May 5th, 2022, and in it, David Sewell and I discuss all sorts of Algorand news that was relevant for that time, including the FIFA partnership with Algorand. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check it out because it's a fantastic discussion. If you've already seen it, still give us a like and subscribe so we can get this new channel off the ground. With all that out of the way, I appreciate all of you for tuning in, and this is the second episode of The Next Block. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? You got JT here, we've got David, and we've got C. Will for another episode of The Next Block. It is currently block 20,822,747. How you guys doing? Doing good. I'm good, man. I'm just happy to, you know, be back at it with the squad. Hell yeah, All back right? at it with the squad. Mm -hmm. All right, for anyone tuning in right now, you know, let us know if you got anything to say down in the chats, anything you want us to discuss, any questions you have for us, let us know. And uh, yeah, let's jump in it from there. Uh, what are you guys seeing out there? Do you want to jump right into our discussions or do you want to have a general chat first? Well, let's general jump. chat. Oh, oh. General chat, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. I always want to jump right into FIFA, but let's let's let's, make some let's let a couple more people roll in. We don't have yeah. too many people right, on the yeah, stream yeah, yet, so let a couple more people roll in. So yeah, how are you guys doing? Man, uh, as y'all saying, I'm I'm recovering. I survived the vid. Surviving <laughs> right. the vid. Yeah. So I, just to put that out there, y'all, I've been I've been doing bad, and now I'm back. Um, feeling good. The market, you know, is feeling, looking how I was feeling for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I felt like uh, yeah. I, you know, obviously I was on vacation for the past week. We were up in visiting family, and so it was a good breath of fresh air. But still, it was like I was expecting to have a you know, five days of not really having to worry about looking at my phone and tweeting and seeing everything. And then obviously Algorand comes out here and starts putting out some of the most, you know, bullish partnerships and like dropping news like every like couple hours. So I was definitely feeling uh, a little jealous of being away from my computer, not being able to record anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know you said you wanted to hop on and uh, make a video about FIFA, but yeah, you know it is what it is. I, I made one for anyone that wants to check out that video. Um, there you go. I made one too, and it was <laughs> yeah, I had to put something now. I was feeling like David I was FOMOing on my YouTube channel. Yep, yep. I, I feel like all of us had that same. It was like, well, we either buy a lot of Algorand or we at least try to like make a video and get some views or something. But yeah, get some uh, hype. I, I will say, uh, what's this name guy? Obviously from Coin Bureau. He uh, just posted like not too long ago about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's one. He wants to do another yep. Algorand video, so that's good. I, you know, I'm always hopefully torn. it's a good video because yeah, I know the thing is, is I like Guy. I think he puts out a lot of good content, but a lot of his Algorand videos, except for his latest one, his latest one, like although it has been a while now, but the last one he did was relatively fair. But a lot of the first couple mentions that Algorand has gotten on his channel were, in my opinion, a little unfair. But it, it that it is what yeah. it is. I mean, I feel like it's it's even though I don't, you know. Some of this is not known and it's speculation. Hey, shout out one NFT happened. for these great NFTs. Yeah. Real quick. Shout out the one NFT. But um, so many of the uh, YouTubers that are like, you know, big, uh, you know, BitBoy Crypto, Altcoin Daily, um, you know, obviously even Guy, you know, they're paid. Like they're paid, you know, BitBoy Crypto, like if you to get mentioned, your crypto mentioned on his channel, like they charge you. So like, there is a, a point where like, you know, I'm not saying Algorand's paying guy to do it or, you know, if, if BitBoy Crypto's, if he mentions Algorand that he's being paid every single time. But, you know, they do have incentive, obviously, just like we do to talk about Algorand, you know, because we're bullish on it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but, you know, there is, you know, I, I've always I've always wondered is the reason why there's so much negativity or like so much criticism towards things like Cardano or Algorand or some of the some of these newer layer ones that are you know green um not as energy you know carbon negative carbon neutral whatever it may be faster cheaper you know i, I kind of wonder if some of these just get such a negative light because most of those youtubers most of these people who have the main uh influence are you know there's they already have their bags packed of ethereum and bitcoin and and the ones that are maybe you know the on the other side of the aisle or the other side of the argument so i you know i, I feel like it's hard to you know, you don't want to bash, you don't want to put, I guess, Algorand on too high of a pedestal because then you might have people, you know, not wanting to go do Ethereum or, you know, some of the others. No, I think that's a good point. All those guys, you know, from my understanding, it was all around 2017, 18 market. Mm -hmm. And they, so they had to build a, because Algorand was not around. So they had to build on ETH and Bitcoin. And then they yeah. actually did it successfully. I remember in 2020, when I first started watching BitBoy Crypto's channel, he had like 100,000. 
Now he's like at a million followers. So I seen him 10x when we had the the last bull run. So it only makes sense that they're tapping into what made them big. Like yeah. for and us, you know, Algorand is my biggest like you know community. And even if people aren't being paid under the table to you know pump certain coins, I mean you have to think about it. Even I forget who said it. I don't know if it was. Uh, from uh, Arlington Capital or whoever at Decipher, but even he, uh, somebody at the, on the stage made a great point that essentially what you do is you make your investment and then you do everything in your power to make sure that investment wins. Yeah. And in, in an essence, that's kind of what we're doing too. I mean, we love Algorand and then we were like, okay, let's start Algorand YouTube shows to get the word out there. I mean, partially, I mean, to, to a degree, we're operating in the same way. I mean, you, you, you know what I mean? If algorand moons because of our content it benefits not only our, ch our channels but also our bags so yeah i, I mean it's, de it's definitely the network effect you know we have to yeah. you know there has to be some, there has to be a soundboard for for it to get out there to the masses and obviously uh, you know it, it makes total sense <clears throat> yeah on that note let's uh move on to the algorand fifa news that was uh, some pretty giant That's news i mean for anybody that is unaware i'm not sure how you'd be unaware at this point if you're following algorand but probably the biggest partnership, not only for Algorand, but really all of crypto. It's soccer or football is a 5 billion person fan base around the world. You know, the World Cup in 2018, at least, it's, the statistics were 1.1 billion people tuning in at least at one point during the World Cup, which is absolutely amazing. So I think this is a, a huge deal. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. I, think, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you go ahead. You can go ahead, see Will. No, I think yes, like uh, one because people like one billion people, and what we got about eight billion in the world. That's that that is a crazy number. And as we you know reading the articles, we made our videos, but a technical partnership is not a sponsorship. So this is much deeper. They have the digital strategy that they'll be implementing for FIFA, which means technically up to five billion people that are gonna need to have some type of digital strategy. Even as we said, like if a quarter of them need a wallet they have to then go to algorand that's what i'm getting out of all of this is that algorand is a key player now in fifa's digital strategy which is more important than a banner on a, a, a arena or anything of that nature yeah i mean <clears throat> and not only uh just looking at the you know the news release not only will it be for the world cup in 2022 but also the regional supporter in north american europe for fifa women's world cup australia and new zealand 2023 so Algorand's name will be, you know, on the pitch. You'll see it out there, you know, on the banners and stuff all around the, the stadium, which is cool for just subliminal messaging, even like people who maybe don't even know crypto and know blockchain. Like they're going to be just like you can look at something and you see the name Coke in a on sitting on the table. Like it's, you know, even though even without thinking it's making a difference, it is. And you're seeing those things and it's and you're consuming that. So that alone will be amazing. But like you said, Seal, what I'm super excited about is the technical partnership. Right there in that first paragraph, it says that FIFA or that um, the agreement means Algorand will become the official blockchain platform of FIFA and provide the official blockchain supported wallet solution. Uh. So you're right there. You're looking at millions of wallets possibly created. We did just see over the last day about another million uh, or, or so new wallets created uh, that came online. Uh, I'm waiting to see the nodes update. If, if I know that they're doing some testing right now or some maintenance, but I'm excited to see how that's going to kind of continue to go up. I'm guessing for to make sure that the network doesn't lag with all the new activity that's going to be mm -hmm. coming on it. But and I'm I'm eager to see what you guys think is your most bullish um, side of this news break. But my most bullish thing that I'm super excited about, and this again goes back to just me being a, you know someone who likes playing video games. Um, I loved and I don't play it as much anymore. I mainly played it back home, but FIFA, you know the video I games. <clears throat> And so with this technical partnership, uh, one of the biggest things, if you're someone who plays FIFA, is uh, FIFA Ultimate Team. Now, FIFA Ultimate Team is where they have a currency where you buy in the game and you spend that currency on getting new players, opening packs, like all those things that, you know, any you know new game has to do to compete with, um, you know, just you know, buying the game once is not enough. They want to make sure you buy it and then you continually spend money all throughout the year on buying new players, buying upgrades and things like that. And not only could they <clears throat> factor in some type of way to, you know, use algo in the game in, in some way, I don't know if that would ever come through, but I do think they could, 
make NFTs in, uh, you know, FIFA Ultimate Team and make that something that could be purchased yep. uh, on the blockchain. You could own it because that's the whole point of it is there's only a set amount of things in FIFA Ultimate Team and owning them and having, you know, Messi or having Ronaldo on your team yep. is huge, especially if you get a gold edition or a special World Cup edition where maybe he scores a goal and they make a, a special commemorative card or NFT for you to get. I mean, that right there is is huge for transaction volume it's huge for adoption uh and getting people to use algorand who maybe wouldn't be uh you know using crypto hey jt can you pull this comment up with algo nice this is just the perfect point why this you know makes a, a great deal for fifa right here um comparing soul to algorand and we do know solana went down like when i made my video i was talking about eth and solana because they did not get chosen but just right there, 4.5 seconds finality and a damn near non-existent fee makes sense for uh, people that are in emerging market to use Algorand, as David said, for FIFA characters and anything, anything of that nature makes a lot of sense. It's yeah, huge. and it's cool because the finality is going down by about half. Uh, but, uh, you know, David, did you see this uh, thread by uh, M uh, Michel from uh, C3 Protocol earlier? I did not because he made pretty much the same exact point you're making. I'll do a quick read of it. And he says, the market is underestimating how big the FIFA and Algorand technical partnership is. Uh, just look at some basic stats in extra content sales of Ultimate Team, a game mode of their popular game, EA Sports FIFA, as you were stating before. And let's see. Here are some of the stats right here. And this is revenue in US dollars. In 2021, it's like $1.6 billion dollars. Yeah, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and you follow this down a little bit more, you know, 1.6 billion spent annually by players in extra content sales and growing. Imagine how big an on-chain version of this could be just the yeah. in-game marketplace transacts and massive, a massive amount of value every day in player cards. Uh, you know, he went on to say a couple things, but somebody made the comment that EA, it's EA's game, not FIFA's game. So it's likely to not happen. However, I posted, uh, what's really interesting is the president of FIFA hinted at the Milken Institute talk, which we'll get to, uh, the, at using the blockchain for the FIFA video game and that, quote, EA will no longer make official licensed FIFA games since FIFA, uh, since FIFA are looking to produce their own football title while EI, uh, EA will be rebranding their EA Sports FC. So essentially, FIFA will be off the hook they'll be able to create their own game and then here's Wait, so the it'll be called fifa fc so it's well, like kind of competing games well ea won't be able to use the fifa name anymore fifa's taking their brand away from ea so they'll be able to build their own games so they could create fifa whatever and they could build it using algorand which is kind of amazing and, and there's an article linked right here as well so if anyone yeah. wants to check that out definitely and go ahead i'll have to do a little bit more research but i already know i mean obviously ea FIFA is is the biggest title right now uh, yep. when it comes to soccer video games. But there already was a couple years back another uh, you know make or uh, video game producer making another type of soccer game um, and and whatnot. And obviously it didn't have. Oh, there's as plenty much, of soccer games, yeah, but yeah, it's, 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 it's the FIFA people. name that yeah. EA yeah. was relying what's the, on. What's the yeah. main platform that people are playing FIFA on? PlayStation, Xbox, what we got? I have really no idea. One of those two. I mean, obviously, PC you can play it as well, but I would I would assume it's probably PlayStation or Xbox. But I yeah, mean, that, that's the thing too. where it'll be tough to integrate a blockchain into PlayStation. That's what I'm I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, I mean, the gameplay is not what happens on the on the blockchain. It's just for like the transactions yes. and whatnot. Yeah. So, like, you know, any time that you're buying in-game content, that could be an actual NFT on the blockchain or you know what have you. There's so many different transactions that can happen within a game. The gameplay itself would still be run normally. It's just the transact. It's just yeah the part of the game that you'd want to have a distributed ledger for. Essentially, yeah, just imagine be. pulling up Ultimate. Uh, obviously, I'm thinking back to when I played it. You pull up FIFA Ultimate Team, and in the top right or somewhere on this on the screen, you have a connect wallet button where you can connect your you know your your crypto wallet, your algo wallet, whatever it is, para algo wallet, and you would be able to then house your money there instead of the way they do it where 
you know, the kind of the web 2.0 where you buy this currency, you buy the player, but you don't own it. You know, if, if, yeah. if they pull the game, you don't own anything. You don't have that card anymore. If the game just goes offline, it's gone. Whereas if in the web three stance, you could buy the Ron, you know, uh, messy card for something that he does and it's a special one and it could be worth something you have it in your wallet the fifa game goes down there could still be a marketplace where you could still sell that and that could be worth something you yes. know a, a fifa jersey i can't remember the player's name but his sold for nine million at the so it's the highest selling jersey it just beat out babe ruth recently um i was yeah. like always right on time that yep. soccer is like you know hitting mainstream or football as they say around the world but yeah, what's right. up with that? Why don't we just call it football? Uh, <laughs> NFL. It's a, it's like the same argument. Like, why don't we use the metric system? I mean, the world will yeah. never know, to be honest. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, though, that's... Uh, again, for NFTs and fans, like, you know, even like if they uh, NFT tickets, mm -hmm. like the, you know, front row ticket will be mm -hmm. worth something. Like all of those type of things, I think it makes total sense. Oh, yeah, that's a, I, you know, it's a perfect segue to, you know, we can just talk more on the Milken Institute conversation because uh, the president of FIFA had mentioned all of these things. You know, he mentioned using NFTs for tickets. He also gave a little nugget that he didn't expand on, but I caught it. And he was talking about like essentially uh, turning the players into assets, which would be really interesting. I don't know how it would work, but you could sort of imagine like years down the line being able to actually like invest in these players. And then like, as they're getting paid more, you get to like share in that revenue or some sort oh, of model like that. It, it, it's exactly. Like, yeah, so it's like it, a loft or excuse me, like a opolis type thing. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. You know, it, it just opens up so much possibility that might not happen right off the bat, but at least like people are able to imagine and start building it. It's so it, it is really interesting. Do we, yeah. do we have a timeline on this partnership? I know it's for the event coming up in November. Um, and the women's FIFA is what every four years. The World Cup is every four years. Four years. Four it's years. either okay. four, four or eight, but I think it's four. So we got at least four years. This is this is huge. And also during November, the ISO two two bank tokens, I yep. guess, go live. So this is like at the same time as the World Cup, and Algorand is one of those tokens. About to so be is it, are we putting our tinfoil hats on that something's oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, something is coming this winter y'all prepare yourselves you know that is actually a good topic of discussion maybe for yeah. for another day because there there is uh a it, it's the it's uh iso iso uh two zero two 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 it's it's there's two zeros in there it's two zero zero two two and essentially it, all it is is basically a set of standards that basically all of the central banks in the world are going to adopt that is uh, it's a it's a standard that swift is going to adopt essentially and swift is like the main way that all of these central banks transact uh, and there are like five cryptocurrencies that are meet those iso 20022 standards and one of them being algorand and it also just so happens too which is eerily bizarre but if you look at the four-year cycle the four-year bitcoin cycle which a lot of people think is going to be disproven but it hasn't been yet if you look at the cycle it actually shows that a bottom would happen around november of this year right when those standards go live so that's a really interesting thing to be on the lookout for that's what i was about to say the big the big uh the big reveal is a 50 percent drop <laughs> and everybody getting liquidated right before we start turning really bullish and and that could happen like, between now and then for sure yeah like silvio said spec speculation turns into use case because another cool thing that I thought with the FIFA partnership and I think it played into it especially with where the World Cup is being held uh, is that Algorand is uh, Sharia compliant um, yep. and it has that so I think that's what also allows it into so many more markets that certain cryptos maybe are not now I, I do not have a list of you know what cryptos meet that uh, compliancy but I still think that you know, Algorand's doing all the right things yep. uh, and it's taking its time um, to, you know, set the, a good foundation for what can be built on it. Yeah, that Sharia compliance is huge. That I, I was, you know, the article I read about that, that happened in 2019. So yep. like right off the top, they were being prepared to do that, which is they can invest in or Islamic states can then invest. It fits their religious rights and all the things that matters for them. So that's a, why I believe FIFA is also know tapped in with that because i think fifa got like 200 countries being involved 
And then I know the eastern part of the world, a lot of Muslim countries need that compliance. So yeah, yeah. this I is think big. It, I think you're mostly right with uh, why FIFA chose Algorand because even if you listen to um, you know the president speak at that Milken Institute, he basically I mean I'm sure there was a team that evaluated it, but he said straight up like he doesn't really understand technology. So like it wasn't yep. I mean of course it's a good technology, but it wasn't solely based on that decision. It was all I mean of course anyone's going to say this in front of a live audience, but he did say that it's because uh, Algorand aligns with their values more mm -hmm. than the other chains that they evaluated. So yeah, even in yeah. the in the excerpt it shows you know his this is what he said he said we're delighted to announce this partnership with Algorand. The co the collaboration is a clear indication of FIFA's commitment to continually seeking innovative channels for sustainable revenue growth for mm. future reinvestment back into football, ensuring, ensuring transparency to their stakeholders and worldwide football fans, a key element of their vision to make football truly global. And they look forward to kind of answer your uh, question, um, uh, Seawell. They look forward to a long and fruitful partnership with Algorand. Mm. And then the chief business officer uh, was quoted saying, uh, this announcement is an exciting moment for FIFA as it officially enters into the world of blockchain and the opportunities this presents across various applications at FIFA, we must constantly strive to identify and explore the most cutting edge, sustainable and transparent means of increasing revenues to continue to support global football development. And it says Algorand is clearly a forward looking, innovative partner that can help us achieve these goals. I, I mean, I just feel like it's everything that we like about Algorand businesses are going to like those things even more. And that's the reason why when you look at stuff like Solana and Ethereum and some of the other uh, more popular chains that are out there, you know, they're they're not going to have these some of these partnerships, at least not right now. Now, obviously, if if Ethereum ever does get to the point where its fees are very cheap and it's, you know, more green and, and things like that, then, yeah, I think there would definitely be some competition there. And if Solana ever gets itself figured out where it's not going down for days at a time and crashing over people trying to make some monkeys and bears, then, you know, maybe maybe people will look to build on there. You know, this is another, another good segue, honestly, because, you know, there was a great question asked of Silvio at, this, at the Milken Institute. And in my opinion, it was the only answer he gave that I wasn't satisfied with. Uh, and that question was, how do you prevent uh, blockchain spam? Like, how do you, because one of the issues with these cheaper blockchains is you can have these bots that can afford to send tens of thousands of transactions at once, millions of transactions or whatever, what have you, whatever it might be, because it's so cheap to do so and then overload the blockchain kind of like what you're seeing on Solana. Solana. And, you know, Silvio's response was, we just have to increase the TPS capacity. But I don't think that that solves the issue, to be honest. Um, uh, and I would like a more satisfying answer uh, from that. I don't know if maybe Paul Regal or somebody else could eventually give a better answer if he could be pressed a little bit more on that. But because uh, I've always had that same thought, too, because uh, it is... You know, I personally do believe Algorand will be fine, but it hasn't been stress tested. Uh, what does happen when we start getting 10,000 transactions, 11,000 transactions? What happens if we do experience like a minute or two of downtime because of some sort of spam? Like, you know, it, it, I, I, th I would just like a little bit more clarity on how uh, Algorand does plan to prevent these spam transactions because they are more possible on the cheaper chains because it's so cheap to do so. Yeah, yeah, so what, what they're question. doing is basically creating a bot to like mint or do a you know an activity, right? I mean, there's all sorts of ways to do it, but it's essentially the the cons the idea behind it is it's it's just so cheap to transact, and the blockchain can only handle so many transactions in a block, so many transactions a second. But if you in one bot or a bunch of bots are creating that entire load, you know what happens to the blockchain? Hmm. Interesting. You know I mean? Another thing uh, to point out too that I was a uh, Little curious is on when the guy was asking uh, Silvio about like who owns the blockchain. He's basically brought up VCs, and Silvio kind of just to say, "Hey, we took a few million dollars for, then we went to seventy million, so we can have a complete product." But yeah. it didn't quite clearly answer the question of who's actually owning it. You know, yeah, Ch uh, Chase brought up a good point to what I was saying, and uh, I actually did see this uh, maybe like a month or two ago, and I should reread it to. Uh, probably give myself more clarity on that question. Uh, maybe it's a good topic for conversation in another episode when we can dig more into that. But uh, yeah, to your point too, I, I did I did hear that question. That was the question about like the VCs that, yeah, that, that bought in. Um, I mean, 
I get the, I understand the question and the concern, but I also understood Silvio's response was like, well, we needed, we needed funding we need to get money, this off yeah. the ground. So like, yeah. I don't know. Which is real. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. 70 million is not that much in the grand scheme of things. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you gotta, you know, you gotta make sure your blockchain works. That's more important than who owns it. Yeah, I definitely do yeah, wonder. And to be you clear, know, too, it's oh, sorry, real quick. It's it's not even though they're investors in it, they don't own the network. I mean, yes. before these metrics went down, you could see that there's like four thousand nodes now. So like, even if Algorand and the Algorand Foundation went away, the blockchain would still be running. It would probably not be great for development because they are the ones that are dishing out all the money. They they know the most about building on it, so it probably would hurt development in the ecosystem but the technology itself would still exist and people would still be free to build on it you know yeah and you know and to come down to it i feel like with we're going towards what forty five thousand uh, transactions with 2.5 second finality um if it gets any faster or better than that bots will be i believe defeated because every second we'll have you know i guess every two seconds a new opportunity to do our transactions yeah, I mean, I, I definitely do fear, like not fear, but I think that it's it's kind of a, a blessing in disguise that Algorand maybe doesn't have the amount of attention that we want it to have right now. Like, obviously, we want it to be yeah, I need know, my bag faster. Bigger. Yeah, we want to see more transactions. We want to see the price going up. We want to see more people getting excited and building on it. But, you know, kind of being in the background right now and building, like I said, creating that good foundation does kind of give it the ability to have like you know jt said in other in past episodes have the you know have the upgrade even before you really need it just so when you get there you're ready for it and so because obviously the upgrade we're about to get is just a 10,000 tps per second and then two and a half second finality and even paul regal in your interview was saying that you know they're they're not it's not like right when they get to 10,000 they're like all right let's you know let's punch out 40 you know 45 46,000 like they're going to do it as that as that need arises and i think that's that's good because that means once they get this um you know upgrade done i would assume the next thing that the algorand inc and a team the tech team is going to be working on is is to make sure that the blockchain is still secure that that it hopefully can resist, you know, spam and bots and all, and a lot of these things, and make sure it has the most robust uh, products to offer, you know, the partnerships that we're seeing. Because you know, just like Ethereum, it has, you know, it's full of you know people who are early and DGENs and you know VCs that are just trying to flip money as quick as they can, as you see with the land sale and crashing and all this stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Algorand's actually trying to build something that's going to be used every day for you know the foreseeable future so they really do have to make sure that they dot their i's and cross their t's i, I do yeah, like one final, final comment is like i do like what silvio said the the multi-blockchain world because his or algorand is a transactional blockchain and that, yeah. that totally makes sense or like i don't know i guess something like solana to do what it wants to do it might not be for transactions yeah i liked his answer it was it was actually really funny because he the, the question he was asked was essentially, uh, you know, does Algorand want to win or is it going to be a multi-chain world? And he he did honestly say right off the bat, it's like, well, I mean, Algorand, we do want Algorand to win. But then he was realistic and was just like, but in reality, you know, there will probably be a dozen or two dozen chains that, you know, end up being good or great at certain things, but, you know, not a winner take all system. So I did find it a little funny that, you know, right off the bat, he was like, well, you know, we are here to win, but realistically, it, it still will probably be a multi-chain world. Yeah. yeah. And, and and even there, I was like, I, I remember I was in Stockmo's Discord back when I first started my channel. And there was a comment that he, when Stockmo made it about like, he made a comment that like, you know, there are probably only going to be maybe 10, 20, you know, chains that it's really survive. Perfect. And a lot of people just got on him like, you know, what is this? You know, you're always so bullish about the ecosystem exploding and going to the moon and everything being great. But I, I feel like that's blockchains. There's going to be, there's still going to be other you know, things built on the blockchains, you yes. know, just like Ethereum, it's not like it's just going to be E. There's still going to be other things and other cryptos that are still going to make it. But as far as like, I feel like layer one blockchains are the main components at the base level, you know, there's not going to be thousands of them like, you know, you're seeing pop up every day. You know, it, it is going to get trimmed to the ones that are actually, you know, going to yeah, be like, for the long haul. This, this like internet this, browsers, we use uh, probably about four or five main internet browsers, but we yeah. all are using the internet, but just, you know, I'm a more of a Google Chrome person, but I do yeah. rock with Safari here and there, and then they got Brave browser that's coming up. Yeah. So I feel like blockchains will be similar.
there's a great writer in the space. I forget her name, but she often, and I, I, I do like this analogy. It's not perfect, but I, I like it a lot. She often refers to blockchains as separate nation states. And when you start to look at them that way, and, and you know, the people within and, and that operate within those nation states are doing, are trying to do what's best for their local ecosystem and their economy, but they also need to be willing to interact with other nation states around them. They can't just be completely siloed off and like build this, you know, crazy wall up and, and, you know, and not interact with the rest of the world. And it's a really interesting way to look at it. I wish I could remember her name because she, she's really one of the best writers in the space. Yep. On that note, though, what do we have right. next on the agenda? Uh, governance debate. Governance debate. Uh, what do you guys think about the ongoing conversation about governance right right now? There's a lot of discussion on, you know, switching the rewards around to incentivize more, you know, DeFi use, more node running and things like that. What do you guys think? Uh, well, off the top, um, I've been watching some of the threads. I think you were in some, JT. Um, I've researched myself. I always like, you know, a different participation with the government. Governance is cool participation, but I think it should spread into, we, you know, we talked about node runners should get them. People who use DeFi should be rewarded. And um, which I could see a possibility that our governance would thin out. Right now we're getting what, about 7%. Um, but I do think the participation should not just be fully in participating in governance. And I want to say shout out to AlgoFi. It does help that I have vaulted my governance bag. Yeah. So I thought that was a, a, a great idea. But yes, I think node run or nodes like what David did, he should be rewarded for helping expand the network. Yeah, I, I, I'm obviously more, I, I still, I think that, you know, node runners should be, um, you know, there is the, that does, it looks, it sounds enticing, but I, I, I feel like I've heard, you know, Silvio and even Paul Regal kind of talk, you know, a couple of times about why they don't, uh, reward node runners and I do still agree with that aspect of like it really does then bring the people who are securing the network by running a node it brings honest you know people into the into run help help the system and help keep it secure because when you start paying these people that's where you can start you know trying to see some people you know all right well I'm just gonna you know in the case of Bitcoin you know I'm just gonna flood all my money to make sure I have the most sophisticated machine to try to solve each block. And I know that there's more, uh, you know, parameters in place for Algorand to where that doesn't happen and yep. centralization can't really occur as easy. But I do think that it, you know, maybe not so much as node runners, but, uh, or even if they do, it's not a, the, the most substantial amount. Um, and yes, then, a tiny amount, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I do I, like the idea of DeFi yeah. getting more rewards and even Stacy, I feel like, that's I think that's where doing. the emphasis really is, is, yeah. is, is right now on the DeFi rewards. And in, in that aspect of it, I, I do agree that there's more of a debate around node running and that is still uh, up for debate, and I'm, I'm welcome to hear more about it. But I do think it's like almost indisputable that governance, as it stands, is competing with DeFi, oh, and yeah. it, 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 it they it really shouldn't be competing with it. Um, I mean, think I remember, before the uh, reason, I, the reason I got to Algorand was the passive income that was going directly to my wallet. That was the initial thing that I that yeah. caught my attention. And even if you know we got one percent back or two percent directly to my wallet, I feel like that would change the game. Yeah. And even think like think about before the Aeneas rewards were put onto protocols like, uh, you know, AlgoFi and now all the other ones, you know, it was you, you know, you weren't really that, that enticed to really, no. you know, put all of your money or your algos uh, or any of your other things staked on those platforms because the rewards were so small starting out. And yeah. then you look over at governance and the APY, obviously, the first one was like, what, 16, 18 yeah. percent. So it was obviously it was more bullish to just, or more a smarter idea to put your money in governance and not have it in D, in, you know, any of the DeFi product protocols. And then you obviously had the Aeneas rewards come out, which made it more enticing. And then obviously just with more people becoming governors, that APY kind of came down. But I think in that one thread, we, we both uh, were talking about JT on Twitter is just saying that like, you know, it's, it can't, it's not gonna be able to compete with, you know, seven, 10, 15% for the longevity of it. If, you know, once the, especially once things like the Aeneas rewards and, and whatnot go away. So I do think it would be, be more beneficial for the, those rewards to be given out to kind of like they've said, node runners, um, you know, DeFi participants uh, and, and things like that. 
Yeah, I'll, anyone, and I'll no agree that the community rewards, like those participation rewards, are what brought me in. But uh, I don't agree with bringing them back in the short term because right now it seems like the emphasis, which I agree on, I mean, how it plays out is yet to be seen. But I agree that the emphasis should be more on active participation and less on passive participation because uh, giving back participation rewards or even governance rewards as it stands is rewarding the passive holders, which doesn't help mm -hmm. out our, you know, it doesn't help out the transaction volume. It doesn't help out the velocity of money. It doesn't help out the TVL. Uh, so right now, I think it's uh, ideal to put the emphasis on DeFi and growing the DeFi ecosystem. And people also have to be aware that none of these decisions have to be permanent. That's like the beauty yeah. of governance is yep. it could be temporary. We could do this you know, we could switch it up for two or three periods just to boost up DeFi. Once DeFi is boosted up and, you know, we've moved up a couple places in market cap and things are looking great for our ecosystem, we can then vote to move things back to a passive way of rewarding people. You know, nothing has to be set in stone. So uh, I do think that at least for the uh, for the near term, I do think an emphasis on growing the DeFi ecosystem and uh, incentivizing people to participate in this ecosystem is a good idea. Yeah, see, that's the uh, Anaya's rewards will be over, or uh, no, I think it was June, sometime in June. I, I'm not sure. I also think it's slightly different for each protocol depending on yeah. like how they're spending it because some of them are like you know spending it quicker into the ecosystem and some you know, are a little slower. So yeah, I feel yeah. like PacFi is giving a lot out, which I love. I love it now because I moved some money over there. Yeah, PacFi is great. I've I've yeah. used PacFi a couple times. I moved almost all my money back to AlgoFi just uh. Just, you know, for those uh, LP farms, really the Go BTC and the stable ones, I just want to earn more stable and Go BTC and yeah. Algorand. But, you know, makes sense. Yeah. I've seen some of the people in the Alg Algorand community on Twitter and, and whatnot just saying, like, you know, with the foundation's quick move, I guess, with maybe wanting to pivot on, uh, you know, the rewards and stuff like that, that some people are, say that, like, it's weakness or it's like, you know, they don't really know, you know, they're just making it up as they go or, or whatever it is. But like, realistically, you kind of made a good point there that like with governance, it's okay to like put different things up to vote and evolve. That's just the like whole point of it. Sylvia. It's, yeah, it's literally it's, the entire point of governance is to yeah. have discussions and debates about things and vote on them. And the other thing is, it's this didn't come out of left field. There's been a lot of chatter about this in the in the community. I mean, yeah. maybe not parts of the community that some people are in, so it might be new to them, but this isn't new. Like, in my opinion, this shows that they're actually listening to some parts of the community and are bringing things up to, uh, you know, for the discussion uh, because the community brought it to their, to their attention. You know, I've even mentioned well before that they brought the, the, well before they brought this up, that it could be a good idea to scrap governance altogether and move to a whole different style of doing things. And that was probably only three or four weeks ago, they said. So they're, you know, it, they're not the only ones thinking about how they can revamp the, this rewards distribution to not compete with DeFi. Yeah. yeah we agree. need DeFi to win. We need our TVL up. For yeah. sure. and, it's, so. and it's had such a good year that like, you know, it's kind of like Stacy said, you know, that's the next thing on that on the, that they're eyeing is getting that TVL up because that's going to also bring bigger eyes from bigger investors. I mean, we already have some of the biggest ones, I feel like with, you know, Arrington, XRP Capital. Um, I was, I and, Damian Brown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Scaramucci and, and other guys. I mean, yeah, he's a he's a whale right there. Yeah, good for friends sure. to have. But, uh, you know, that is the next step is getting that TVL up having more protocols come in. So when people come into the ecosystem, there's tons of different options available, multiple, you know, new things are being built, but I also still think that, you know, there just has to, there's more, there's more foundation that has to be built out with things like algorical C3 protocol. Um, we need another lofty type platform for, I really can't. Yeah. For, I agree with that more like real world use cases, but I can't wait for algorical really because that'll help onboard a lot of real world use cases. I mean, a lot yeah. of, a lot of real world use cases. Well, need break that, that one down a little bit. Is it like chain link? Essentially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Algorand is very much so lacking in Oracle and what Oracle's do, uh, you know, uh, blockchains are really good about with aggregating data that's on chain that you know all the data that's on chain really good about creating a great ledger that's transparent but it's not good 
at figuring out what data is off-chain in the real world. That's where oracles come in to provide a reliable source of information from the real world, whether it be like, you know, scores from a basketball game so a sports betting thing can happen or what have you. You know, that information has to come from somewhere else and make its way on-chain. And that's where oracles come into play. So you, wow. you, could, you can imagine there's a lot that can be done and built out once there's an active oracle system that's bringing reliable off-chain data on-chain. Yep. See, what I was hyped about um, Chainlink around this time last year, they were talking about their climate initiatives, I guess, where you could, exactly what you described, JT, you can plug in real world climate information and see who's actually producing the, the carbon emissions like more on point to bring it on chain. And so, yes, that does make a lot of sense. And Algorand needs that, especially as a carbon neutral blockchain. We got to track these big corporations better. You know, I I interviewed the guy from Algorical months ago, and I forget if he gave a timeline or not. But I, I'd like to check in with him and see, uh, you know, you see, yeah, 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 see, see how things are going. Yeah. So, what do you guys think about the market more broadly, anyway? Oh man, so like again, I was like haven't looked at the market for a while, and some of the other plays I in were were in the red, and uh, that did not make me feel good. But uh, which I always like though is that Bitcoin stayed solid. So that's always a big sign for me. I'm always talking about Bitcoin, but it definitely held up more than a lot of these stocks and other cryptos. That that's what I my my review on the market. Yeah, I'm still I still am in the camp that and obviously I could be, you know, very wrong. So, you know, this is not financial advice right here. <laughs> but I'm still kind of in the camp that we see some form of it, whether it's a relief rally um, you know, or something during the summer months before maybe an, a bigger, uh, you know, fall uh, and come the end of the year, possibly. And then and then it kind of, you know, could be a, a longer bear market before we, you know, continually go up. But I'm still expecting a nice, a nice bounce to come. Obviously, I know May historically is not a great month. Yep. Um, so, you know, maybe this is the outlier. Maybe we will see a decent run. I mean, obviously, on the news, Algorand had a nice pump from, you know, the 58, uh, you know, upper 58 cent range all the way to like 73 cents. And then, you know, it kind of was sitting in, you know, right above 70 cents for a while. And obviously this morning or today, it's dropped all the way back down to, you know, 62 cents was the low. So, you know, the news is great, but obviously it's not enough to with the macro conditions we're seeing and the dollar just keeps pumping like like uh, we saw today it's like it's not enough to beat that but i will say the the foundation has it's already laid for enough people our new people are getting into it and the excitement's growing that if the macro headwinds reverse even slightly even if the dollar starts to weaken and loose for a month or a month and a half and it goes on a slide I think that's enough for Bitcoin to see a pump all the way to something like 50K, which maybe we could see Algorand have a pump up to like $1.50. I'm not saying we're going to see new all-time highs, but I could see some type of, you know, relief rally up, um, which, and I also want to warn people here, if something like this were to happen, this is also where people might get too excited, right? And think that this is going to be a blow off top and, and you're going to have all the heads, like, you know, all the pumpers i mean hell i'll i can might maybe even be one of them <laughs> but you're gonna have people <laughs> saying that like this thing's going to the moon and we're gonna be high-fiving and everything's gonna be joyous and you just gotta remember not to over leverage yourself on something like that because if you do that then on the way back down it could be such a quick and rapid descent that a lot of people get liquidated and get turned off to the market so you just Say, gotta what, be what goes up must come down Right. You just got to be smart that if you're watching it, you know, remember to take profit. Don't get too greedy if we see some green because, you know, keep your moon bag. But, you know, remember to stay smart when it comes to, you know, your, your overall portfolio and how much is in, you know, risky assets when the when the market's going crazy. Have you been buying into this uh, this uh, shit coin over here? <laughs> Actually, yes. I've been buying in. It's been losing value ever since. <laughs> no, this is the. Uh... This is the dollar. Oh, I'm just, yeah. I'm just joking. But um, well, I guess maybe I'm not. Who knows? Yeah, that's um, why I'm joking. I knew it was a dollar. <laughs> but yeah, regardless, it really, my eyes are really just on the strength of the, of the dollar. See here, this this red line here is is a uh, is a macro uh, macro top from the last. I think like 2017 is where this line is, or maybe it goes back a little further than that. Uh, and we bounced off of it pretty perfectly. I actually think this line goes back pretty uh, farther than that. But regardless, 
I thought we were heading back down. We had this crazy slump right here over the last couple of days, and then the dollar just back probably. back to all time highs. So I mean, that's part of the reason the crypto market's down today. Uh, in so my what this opinion, means is that we're people are basically getting into cash. Is that what we're saying? Um, not necessarily. Uh, Zoom out a little bit there, JT. So show them like the bigger picture, maybe on a different candle, like, uh, yeah, like a day candle. Show them kind of what it looks like from, you know, if you zoom out. Yeah, there we See, go. We were on this crazy right. channel since May of last year, which we broke out of right here. Is that the to, quantitative easing? Um, <laughs> actually, the opposite. We've uh, we've been in quantitative tightening lately, the which is which is pretty much uh, the the Federal Reserve is selling the assets on its balance uh, balance sheet now. Well, well, they're going to start quantitative tightening in June, I think. So technically, this might be QE still. But no, regardless, the dollar strength is more so based on the back of the global macroeconomic conditions. I mean, you think about Turkey, I believe. They just announced they had like 69% inflation. Yeah, uh, they're doing bad. Yeah, and rate hikes alone, they actually strengthen the dollar too. They actually strengthen the dollar as well in the kind of this weird sense. So in reality, even though, infla even though inflation is hurting us in a global uh, situation like this, the global dollar still seems like a reasonable place to park your money for all sorts of different nation states. And there's actually as <laughs> this is actually kind of a fucked up thing. Sorry, pardon my language, but like it's kind of a messed up thing of us raising interest rates so much is it actually increases the costs of other countries debts Borrowing, yeah. so you know say a smaller country that's already relatively broke has a bunch of dollar denominated debt the interest rate keeps on going up on their debt which means uh -huh. the there could be defaults of these other countries so there there is actually like a rapid rate of people trying or countries trying to repay that debt uh, before the interest rates go up so much so there is uh, actually there is actually a case of uh, nation states switching their currencies over to the dollar to repay uh, repay some of those debts yeah That's, yeah so we think we're getting rocked right now imagine if oh, you the like, world's getting rocked this yeah, is honestly it's, yeah it's not good it's really not good for anybody but like on the other hand if they didn't if they didn't try to start raising interest rates there's an argument that we could have worse runaway inflation so like uh, it's, it's, it's a tight rope to walk, honestly. No, uh, neither scenario is good. I mean, runaway inflation is not good, but like oh. rate hikes aren't good. So I, I don't know. Pick your poison, I guess. What's, what's another currency that you'll be interested in buying other than the dollar? Uh, whew. I'll go. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it, no, in reality, uh, gold seems actually more attractive than people want to admit. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know how, how people feel about that, but I would actually like to have some gold access on Algorand and hopefully... Algo Mint and, and Meld Gold can make that happen sooner than later. Yeah, that'd be cool to have something like a lofty AI, but a gold type thing where you can invest in it there. And obviously not like a you know, receiving daily payouts, but just a way to you know get into it sure, with yeah. using Algo and using crypto. Oh, it'd be super easy to tokenize for them to tokenize gold. They just have to yeah. do it. But then you just really, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's legal hurdles to it, but uh, the actual act of doing it really wouldn't be too difficult. Uh, the only thing you'd have is that counterparty risk where you aren't holding your gold. You're just holding a token that represents gold in somebody else's vault. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. So yeah. I got a question for y'all. A couple of people, you know, sending me DMs. Two things. This is about the Algorand ecosystem. Where, where uh, you consider your best yields right now? Passive income. <sighs> Best yields are different than responsible yields, I, sh I well, guess I should two say. Two-part question, best and or, uh, you know, with responsibility on their volatility and whatnot. Because oh, they perfect. asked me AlgoFi, or excuse me, not AlgoFi, but Lofty. And I'm trying to also give people, you know, more information rather than just Lofty. Lofty is great, but you're illiquid and you get about 6 7 8%. What else we got besides Lofty? I mean, I could give everybody exactly what I'm doing, but I don't want to. I don't want it to seem That's like it's complicated already. Uh, yeah, I don't want it to seem like it's like an endorsement that everybody should try this strategy. But we'll see. No financial advice. This is just an opinion-based thing. Yeah. So basically, everything I'm doing is, you know, I'm earning passive income through Lofty. I am participating in governance through AlgoFi and Folks Finance. Um, for a, for a while, this program just ended, but for a while, I was pairing my algo and my g algo that i got from folks yep. finance into a liquidity pool at tiny man i was earning a good amount of money there but that yep. ended so currently on that one yeah 
yeah, currently I have Algorand supplied as collateral on AlgoFi, earning about three and a half percent. I have USDC uh, on AlgoFi supplied, earning about ten percent, just as collateral. And then I am farming the Go BTC stable pair on AlgoFi for about eighteen percent. The Go ETH and stable pair for about twenty six percent. I okay. am staking my Opulus for about 12% on AlgoFi. And the last but not least, I'm staking my XCT on Yieldly for like 20%. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What, what about you, David? Uh, mostly me. Uh, I mean, obviously, I know that there's huge yields still on Yieldly, I believe, for some of the things, for some of the tokens that are out there. I, I'm not on Yieldly currently. Um, I'm primarily in AlgoFi. Um, I have mine in their vault for governance. And also I have, you know, supplied, you know, stable, uh, USDC, Algo. Um, I have also have my DFly and my um, Opulus stake there. So I like uh, AlgoFi. Obviously I use Lofty. I see someone oh, says yeah. ours. I forgot to mention taxes. my DeFi. Um, yep. But um, with Lofty, um, it wasn't very hard. Uh, I will say they did get their... Um, you know, they did get their, all their uh, yeah, one, documents think. out super late. So like, you know, I didn't, I didn't do it this year, months, but yeah. as far as what it would be to do it, it doesn't seem like it would be that difficult as long as you get all of the right yeah. forms. Yeah. Comparatively, um, <laughs> it's, it's a million times easier than your crypto taxes. Like yeah. it, yeah. It, uh, it, it would be an additional step than just like your normal uh, wage job, of course, but it is, it is nothing like a million DeFi transactions that's for sure yeah I, I will say this as well is the uh when it comes to lofty it is kind of you know important to consider that if, if you're like someone who wants to buy like one token on every single property that they have like then you know you're gonna have a, a lot of forms to fill out um you know because you have to fill out a form for each property i'm pretty sure so that's something that maybe you know to consider when you're buying properties is is maybe you know, obviously diversifying diversifying is good on different properties, but you know, the more properties you hold tokens on, you know, the more confusing that could get. I mean, you can um, bring those but, forms to H and R Block. You don't have to go through my, the headache, or, you know, or find yeah, or find an even it. better accountant. But like, even H and R Block can handle those forms. Do do not use uh, TurboTax. They got a case going on right now where they yep. they basically rob. Yeah, go sit down with somebody. Sit down with a physical person and pay them. You know that five hundred to a thousand dollars, they'll give you right. That's that's my advice on there. But the second yep. thing was that I wanted to say people uh, are DM me about Choice Coin, and I want to bring up what the comment was saying, Nerd and Citrus. So, what y'all thinking about Choice? And they're not all the same, but Choice, Nerd, and Citrus. Yeah, and I, hold on, I want to I want to get to this comment too because uh, you know we weren't like ignoring it for for like any reason. We just we have an hour here, and we had a bunch of things we wanted to get to. Uh, I've had you know, nerd on my channel. I've had Citrus on my channel. We've, we've spoken to them. I think it's a great idea. If anyone hasn't uh, checked out that interview, definitely check it out. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it is a great idea. I don't know how many projects are onboarding through them yet, but anybody that's working towards helping to, you know, make sure we reduce the amount of rugs in the ecosystem, I'm for. Heck yeah. yeah same. I agree. I, I, I had nerd on my channel, uh, Monty Allen. Um, I honestly, I like how he, he makes his moves. But yeah, no, I, love I do Monty. not invest in the token. No, but I do like how they're adding utilities and things of that nature to their ecosystem. And yeah. then two, I Citrus, I believe, just like Algo Dow and uh, things of that nature, what JT said, we need more projects that are vetting and one or two is all right. We need three, four, five, possibly. So yeah. I, shout I out to the nerd team. Yeah, for me, it's like, you know, all, there's so many ASAs out there. For me, it's just... Uh, especially because you know there's been rugs. I've, I've thankfully only been really a part of one of them, but um, you know I don't like you know it's a risk basis thing for me. It's how much risk, even like things like Opulus and Yieldly. I mean, there's even though they look good and they have great products, there's still a lot of risk that you're there's taking. Even AlgoFi. I mean, got, like you know just don't just don't use AlgoFi and think that it's perfect just because we use it. Like you know, there's still risk there. There's risk in so many platforms and things that are being built, especially being this early. Um, but no, it's, it's not a, like a conflict. He said, you know, it's not a conflict of interest. You know, we're all YouTubers. I think we're actually all going to try to plan uh, a video uh, thing together, us three with uh, crypto nerd and even uh, the recoup. We, you know, we love each other all, all on social media and, and want to see nothing m more. I feel like than everybody's channels growing. And I feel like, you know, it will.
Yeah. And then Citrus, yes, it is a launch pad. But um, from my understanding, launch pads usually are less likely to be a rug because they're with an organization that's helping them launch their token. Yeah. That's so unless, the, unless the launch pads scam me as well. Yeah. Then. <laughs> then, then so my second thing was people are DMing me about choice coin. Um, I have my opinion. I, I again, or haven't invested in the token. I used to farm it on Yieldly, but right. Choice Coin and like Nerd, shout out to them, are not like tokens I'm honestly looking for at this moment. But in terms of what they're doing for their projects, I do like that Choice Coin is doing the voting infrastructure, and they just did a vote with Yieldly. Um, anybody know about how that vote went out? <laughs> you and Monty. <laughs> yeah, that shows love right there. I did. Uh, I saw the vote that they did with Yoli, so I, I think it's cool. Um, but again, like uh, I just don't know, you know, longevity wise. I I would rather you know hold uh, and be more invested in certain you know cryptos that I'm in, mainly Algo. Uh, I have a few other smaller ones, but I like having my biggest bags in ones that are, uh, you know. I feel the that have the biggest potential and then obviously i spread a little bit out but i'm not i don't i don't hold any choice coin and i'm not really i don't do a ton of research on them just because uh you know i feel like you know they could moon but i'm not going to take that risk oh yeah, yeah I'm, and, I'm and citrus risk right now isn't exactly a launch pad uh they're working with a launch pad which is the algo fund or whatever it is uh that they launched uh they have they have a staking pool on there as well but they are more of like an information uh, database, sort of. So their their goal yeah. is basically to bring reliable information to the ecosystem. Um, yeah, so Citrus is a solution as a one-stop shop for all Algorand data and communication between the community and key holders. It is an information hub that integrates with the blockchain to track data on projects and team members. We aggregate project information directly from one source into one easy-to-navigate user interface and offer project managers the tools they need to engage the community about their work. So, I mean, it's, it's in a fancy way of saying they're trying to get be a centralized hub so you can learn about all of these different projects and actually be like relatively confident that they're not rug pulls or at least the ones that they give information about so they're providing yeah. information for your education yep yeah for sure let's let's jump into um uh just to wind out here uh you know some other news and reasons to be bullish uh we got the kd news with oh, yeah. kevin durant i won't say kd because people may not know him oh, uh, no. basketball <laughs> player for the brooklyn nets uh obviously i would say one of the biggest names in the nba right now um you know outside of maybe like Giannis and and lebron but uh kevin durant obviously he, he owns 30 was it 35 ventures is or three five yeah, ventures three, is the five name ventures. he's a partner yeah. one of the main partners in three five ventures yeah. and they bought a minority stake of gotham fc which is the team algorand has sponsored yeah uh jt if you can pull up that visual uh of, With KD, of like this. kd holding that jersey i mean yeah. and that's the thing like this is you know, for the nba yeah, Kevin Durant's not not partnering with Algorand, so this doesn't uh, directly affect Algorand in any way, really, other than the fact that, you know, for some people, uh, you know, they may see this visual and say, you know, oh, wow, KD, you know, he's holding up an Algor, you know, a jersey yep. with Algorand's name on it. So that's the cool part. I just thought that was some bullish news to see as far as just from a, a visuals uh, standpoint. But also, you know, maybe there is a deeper meaning there. Obviously, he doesn't have to, you know, tell all of his investments so maybe he does hold he got a lot of good investments but like he was in early on postmates and now he's in on gotham fc i think he got in on uber um possibly crocking as well like they, they getting busy out there because remember when he was out there in golden state they're right down the street from silicon valley and they recruited people like stephen curry because of their fame to also being investors in these projects which brings out a nice urban and sports market so i think it is great um to to have kevin durant holding up that jersey hey the more yeah. exposure the better in reality i know that, um, that's the crazy thing is there there has been so much exposure just the past few weeks with main like so many big names uh partnering or saying they're going to use algorand or even just in a, in a kind of a back you know behind the doorway with kevin durant investing in gotham fc yeah, I can't wait whether it's, you know, this year, next year, the year after. It could be a while, but I really can't wait for the next bull run. I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be very I, exciting for this ecosystem. I need, I need to I need to uh, wait till next year. I need to, you know, people <laughs> build those, build those bags. Yeah, I got to build my bag. You know, we're, we, 
we're reaching the end here, but I do just want to comment on this last comment that IE said, uh, you know, why, why do they need a token, essentially? It's like, uh, I mean, I guess the idea behind it is just to reward people for various different initiatives, because I know they're going to be, uh, actually, I really don't know for certain, but I think it's mostly just to reward people for, you know, whether it's like information they find or provide on certain projects or what have you. I don't know. It's, it's, it's basically in my in my understanding, I could be wrong, I don't speak for the project, but in my understanding, it's a rewards token. However, this question is a really important and deep question that you could actually start to ask about a lot of projects. I mean, in reality, there's there's a lot of projects out there that I look at and I go, you don't really need a token. I mean, there's, you look at like Lofty AI and, and, and AlgoFi and and folks finance things like that they, they are going to come out with a governance token likely in the future but they're running a perfectly successful operation providing great service to the ecosystem with no need for a token so it yeah. is true it is true that a lot of projects actually don't need a token um yeah. so i always you know. say that a lot of projects should literally just adopt usdc or adopt algo and just help blow the ecosystem up um, because it is for me in my pain a waste of time for a lot of the projects that you just named to try to even have a token Yes, yeah. I mean, I get why it, it, it to, to, to some degree it is kind of crowdfunding. Uh, you, yeah, you know, so you, uh, you know, if you're trying to create a project and you don't have access to good investors because you're just like a random nobody and you don't have connections, maybe you're not a people person, but you have this great idea and you know how to build it. You know, one way to fund your operation is through tokenization. You know, you could you know sell fifty percent of your tokens to the public and then use that money to uh you know fund your operations essentially so i i understand why it's done but you just have to be careful because yeah that is it is true that uh there's a lot of tokens that at least currently in their current iteration in, in my opinion don't really do much yeah because in the bear market when you look at I, I call algorand the number one right and then all the number two tokens which is like everything else they have a, a bigger downside right but during a bear run you can get a lot of multiple x's out of these other you know alternative to algorand tokens so that's something to consider and right now we're kind of in a bearish market so i would say protect yourselves with these tokens <laughs> yes. that's what yeah, I yeah, yeah definitely i mean yeah i mean it is uh, it is true that a lot of these tokens are like a 10 million dollar project and if it went to like a billion dollar market cap that's that's a huge multiple yes. but it is also true that those 10 million dollar tokens can also just as easily go to zero yeah, so go to hundred thousand buy them a nice bentley and a couple other things and a plane ticket to the to the to fiji or something i, I want to end with a couple 26. other things they said the fifa world one of the commenters said fifa world cup will be held in north america in 2026 that's true would be awesome if algorand retained this partnership until then for more exposure uh and, and technical partnership so I, I i think it'd be hard to be in and out yeah, I, I do think, I mean, and, and, and going on that point, um, you know, uh, FIFA has not added a sponsor since like, what, 2011, I believe is what the article said. So like, they, they're, they, I feel like, you know, I, mean, I feel like, you know, they're not choosing this partnership lightly, just like the other ones that are listed on there, are like Coca-Cola, um, you know, and some and Adidas and other big names, like, this is going to be a partnership that you're going to see you know, bloom into a much yeah. bigger thing, especially as Algorand continues to pick up steam. I mean, we're even, I know we don't kind of won't have time to really talk about it a lot, but even smaller partnerships, Australian Zoo partners with Algorand for its NFT project. Like you're going to see tons of, you know, small things, big things start to use blockchains. And yeah, so crypto, it's going to be partnered with uh, FIFA as well for a North American sponsor. And I think that's yeah. big. Yeah, so it, there's going to be uh, lots of huge, huge things for Algorand in the future, and I and I do agree. I hope I hope they retain that partnership, but I think they will. I, I don't I don't think this would be a, a one and done thing, uh, yeah. you know, unless obviously something terrible happens to the Algorand blockchain. And and my understanding from everything I've read and from what I've watched um, is that this partnership is really a twofold partnership. So you have the one side of it, which is basically just like for exposure, you know, to get the name out there, have your name be on all sorts of, you know, all sorts of FIFA related things. And then there's the technical side of it. So the exposure side of it could last until 2026. I believe it will. But the technical side of it, I think is going to last for quite some time. And you, if you listen to the way the president of FIFA was speaking, you know, he was looking for something that can withstand, you know, you know, decades worth of, uh, of, 
uh, longevity. So I think this is a very long technical partnership. I mean, it's yet to be seen, or at least I don't know exactly. I'm sure somebody does, but it's yet to be seen how long the exposure on the name itself, like how long they'll ha be flashing Algorand logos everywhere. I hope it's until 2026 because that'd be awesome to see it at the North yeah. American World Cup. But the technical partnership, I could see that going on for decades. You know what I also see happening is a, a snowball effect because now you're like, shit, FIFA has worked with them. Why wouldn't my company? Yep. Right? Yeah. Yep. That's yep. something oh, I'm seeing and, too. And honestly, FIFA people, you know, uh, people in this country in, in the United States have a uh, don't really understand how big soccer is and don't really understand how big FIFA is. FIFA has more nations inside of it than um, the UN. Yeah, than the UN, which is <laughs> insane. It, it's it's yeah. one of the biggest organizations. In fact, it might actually be the biggest organization in the world. It is. Yes. It, this it's isn't a small partnership. And if you think that the largest organization in the world didn't do their due diligence, and this isn't going to give uh, Algorand a lot of respect on the world stage. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that might have never even been interested in blockchain, but love FIFA or really respect the organization because of how absolutely gigantic and influential it is that are now looking at Algorand with the, you know, a, different, a different picture. To check yeah. this out, I was pulling up the statistics in one of my videos, but you got Southeast Asia, Africa, North America, you can basically name every continent and continent in the world and they're supporting soccer first as a sport. You know, yeah. that is the like the most easiest sport to get to in globally. You don't need a, a like a whole football stadium. You don't need all this stuff, football and basketball. You need a lot. That's more yeah. of a, a, you know, a developed yeah. nation thing. In some countries, all you need is a bag and a, and a goal, maybe not even a goal post. So you can play soccer for hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely one of the biggest partnerships I've seen, you know, since I've been in crypto and been following the space. So I just, you know, it's super bullish, I, obviously super excited. Uh, I had to get out a, a more detailed video out and try to, you know, show that to hopefully, you know, get some more attention out there, um, you know, for YouTubers to pick up on Algorand. Because I, yeah. I do think that, you know, even if we do see a, maybe a small relief bounce, if even if it doesn't come and 2022 just, you know, sucks all the way until the end, <laughs> you know, at some point it's going to end. At some point it's going to flip and go bullish. And when it does, look out. And the thing is, like, it's still not even done. Can y'all imagine, like, you know, Stacey Warden and Kelly have said that there's so much, you know, marketing that's going to be coming and they keep saying algo summer and things like that. Yeah. It's like, we're just, I think, scratching the surface of still what they have planned and partnerships. And so I'm sure there's still going to be plenty of other big things that we're going to be talking about on this show. So make sure to tune yeah. in. Yeah, I haven't seen Silvio speak this much and publicly before. So yeah, they're, that's, they're, you know, he's killing it right now. So shout out to Silvio. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And, you know, that's a great way to end the show, really. If you liked everything you, you heard and you want to hear more of it, like, subscribe to all of our channels. You know, you've got JT Invest in You, you've got Crypto for Change, you've got Passive Income Network. Yep. Give us all a subscribe and we'll catch you in the next episode.